The 2.3 quadrillion global time bomb is ready to blow. This isn't just a time bomb so much as it is a world-ending event. Or would be if there were not forces competing for that honor that will likely get there first. We have reached the singularity my friends. What is waiting for us on the other side will be very different. And the singularity itself should be most exciting. The solution really is very simple. Just print up $5 billion for every person on earth and hand it out. All debts can be immediately paid off, and everybody on earth will be a multi-billionaire. Nobody will ever have to work ever again and we will all be living in paradise. Isn't there a point where these numbers don't matter anymore? Is 2.3 quadrillion dollars significantly different than 1 quadrillion dollars? World ending or not, such a debt level will require a big reset. What that looks like is what we should all be asking ourselves. When the chips start falling, chaos ensues. Chaos is never good for supply chains, and everything depends on a supply chain unless you grow, make it yourself. Even then, you have to protect it from marauders who are starving. This is only the tip of the iceberg. If the debt implodes, the banksters can steal your money in 401 kilo second. The bail-in laws were written in the 2008 crisis. Then global bank bail-ins and direct theft of everything they can get their filthy hands on. The government will bail it out with money printing, they don't produce anything. It's just a massive parasite living off its host the tax donkeys. The money printing hasn't even started. Give it some time. You ain't seen nothing yet. The trend has been noticeable for decades that governments are increasingly the ones who have money to spend and if you want to get rich in business government needs to be your number one customer. Government contracting has been all the rage in the United States for at least the last century and especially the last 40 years. The clear alliance is now private sector companies buying into the government agenda will be promised central bank financing as long as they go along with the woke culture. This clearly explains why all the major corporations are spouting woke nonsense in spite of this spitting in the face of at least half of their alleged customers. Their customer is now the government. Either working for the government in any country, or getting one of those lucrative military-industrial complex contracts is your ticket to becoming a multi-millionaire these days. Money markets and banks don't want to hold cash anymore and see no reasonable place to invest, so they dump it back to the Fed even though they get a measly 0.05%. The system is about to crack as many economists have stated. Even Druckenmiller said unless rates go up and the Fed stops printing, the dollar might collapse. All the issues and problems are a result of a monetary system that allowed governments and banks to create money out of debt. In fact the term money is a misnomer, it's just currency, because money has a store of value function and clearly a fiat currency that can be conjured up at any amount by a keystroke, doesn't have a store of value. So if being able to conjure up any quantity of currency they want to bail out previous mistakes or to fund their pet projects or to fund their lifestyle, while the rest of us have to go to work to earn the same currency to survive as their idea of the next iteration of money, they can go F.A. themselves. The world can't continue to operate with a system that allows an ever-increasing swath of people to live without producing while the rest are required to slave away. I have no idea what comes next, probably a large die-off. Unless there is zero-point energy tech that they can roll out which can be scaled to provide many of the basic needs of life, this currently constructed social and government structure is going to implode along with this farce of a monetary system. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. A bank failure occurs when a bank is unable to meet its obligations to its depositors or other creditors because it has become insolvent or too illiquid to meet its liabilities. More specifically, a bank usually fails economically when the market value of its assets declines to a value that is less than the market value of its liabilities. The insolvent bank either borrows from other solvent banks or sells its assets at a lower price than its market value to generate liquid money to pay its depositors on demand. The inability of the solvent banks to lend liquid money to the insolvent bank creates a bank panic among the depositors as more depositors try to take out cash deposits from the bank. As such, the bank is unable to fulfill the demands of all of its depositors on time. Also, a bank may be taken over by the regulating government agency if shareholders' equity, i.e. capital ratios, are below the regulatory minimum. 
The failure of a bank is generally considered to be of more importance than the failure of other types of business firms because of the interconnectedness and fragility of banking institutions. Research has shown that the market value of customers of the failed banks is adversely affected at the date of the failure announcements. It is often feared that the spill-over effects of a failure of one bank can quickly spread throughout the economy and possibly result in the failure of other banks. Whether or not those banks were solvent at the time as the marginal depositors try to take out cash deposits from these banks to avoid from suffering losses. Thereby, the spill-over effect of bank panic or systemic risk has a multiplier effect on all banks and financial institutions leading to a greater effect of bank failure in the economy. Gold's resurgence in fashionability reflects the collapsing currency pyramid scheme of debt creation and currency debasement, the deception having been revealed resulting in naked, open-air printing of worthless paper by central banks. The system is left hanging by a thread, its operatives playing Russian roulette with ticking financial nuclear fission warheads. Gold is the chivalrous protector of Earth through time and space, the truly honest regulator in nature, balancing the divine scales of justice, impartial and incorruptible. Sound money is way to venerate the past, in the present, for the future and gold is ringing time on this unrepentant, debauched corruption by debt creation and currency debasement. Last week's failure in the US repo market might have had something to do with Deutsche Bank's disposal of its prime brokerage to BNP, bringing an unwelcome spotlight to the troubled bank and other foreign banks with prime brokerages in America. There are also worrying similarities between Germany's Deutsche Bank today and Austria's Credit Anstalt in 1931, only the scale is far larger and additionally includes derivatives with a gross value of $50 trillion. If the repo problem spreads, it could also raise questions over the synthetic ETF industry, whose cash and deposits may face escalating counterparty risks in some of the large banks and their prime brokerages. Managers of synthetic ETFs should be urgently re-evaluating their contractual relationships. Whoever the repo failure involved, it is likely to prove a watershed moment, causing US bankers to more widely consider their exposure to counterparty risk and risky loans, particularly leveraged loans and their collateralized form in CLO. The deterioration in global trade prospects, as well as the US economic outlook and the likelihood that reducing dollar interest rates to the zero bound will prove insufficient to reverse a decline, will take on a new relevance to their decisions. It would be far better to merge Commerzbank and Deutsche Bank or Wells and JP Morgan before another Lehman moment. Because it is coming not because I say so but because of internal pressures within these organizations. If they are merged all the bad paper can be rationalized as we say based on a far stronger profits picture. These banking companies are almost entirely personnel and real estate expenses with vast service duplication. As automation eliminated about 98% of all farm direct labor it is now moving through manufacturing and services as you well know. Until about 2000 the story was, everyone will get a great professional service job especially if you had a degree. This was very much focused on banking and finance, education KPHD, healthcare manager, and similar. Being largely dependent on the real economy the banks simply cannot pay their expenses, pensions, new hires at inflation-indexed wages while held to razor-thin margins. Wells Fargo should be merged with JP Morgan and Wells obliterated over the next three years with most of their locations closed and, perhaps, 80% of their employees released. These small companies are used as jobs projects for unemployable spoiled children with worthless degrees and these enormous inventories of heads are breaking the companies on costs. Student loan and car defaults don't seem to matter much, and neither do business closings and rising unemployment so if it's not America then it must be Europe and probably Deutsche Bank. So they can keep this up for nearly forever, China trade deal on, off, on, off, on, off. Rates up, down. Quantitative easing coming back, not coming back, coming back, not coming back. You get the idea. Every scenario is accounted for then the wheel is spun bets are laid down, no more bets is called and then they go to work knowing in advance due to the computers and the magnets and other tech stuff exactly where to stop the wheel at max pain and max fleecing. They can predict what the best outcome is both for maximum mark extraction and psychology so much so the mark starts screaming for the quantitative easing that's slowly eating the flesh off the real economy. Rinse and repeat until all real value is gone. Everyone is broke except an anointed few and then bail and leave the plebes to the commies with AI. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share.
leave me a comment subscribe and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels i do upload videos there too you'll find the links in the description box you will also find a paypal link if you want to make a donation thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated stay safe and healthy friends